Following on from the previous video, we were trying to determine if this series will converge or if it will diverge, and we use the ratio test. When it comes to the ratio test, we always need to know this value here. As it turns out, this value equals 1. And when it, comes, when it equals 1, then it's inconclusive, meaning that we can't tell if this is going to converge or if this is going to diverge. So as far as we're concerned, the rate, with the ratio test, we are done. Uh, when it equals 1, it's inconclusive. There's nothing we can tell about the original series. As far as we're concerned, the ratio, with the ratio test, we are done. But, but, but as it turns out, there is a way to tell if this is going to converge or if this is going to diverge. So, just remember, as far as the ratio test is concerned, we are done. Because it equals 1 and it's inconclusive. But there is a way to tell. So, in the previous video, we... Um, we, 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 at one point we did actually get to this stage here where I said that when, when you get to this stage here concentrate on the leading term. The leading term equals 4n squared and, uh, and concentrate on the leading term here. Um, yeah, we, we did get to this stage here but, uh, but now when you get to this stage here let's just concentrate on, on the next term divided by the current term. Concentrate on the next term divided by the current term. So that will then give us well, this will be the same. So, so I want, in the previous video, we did get to this stage here. But let's forget about the limit. Let's just look at the next term divided by the current term. Next term divided by the current term, which equals this. Okay, so so we, we are not looking at the limit of this thing. We are just purely looking at the next term divided by the current term. Okay, so, so that's this bit here. So when you look at this, um, this block here, well, if you multiply this out, you would get 4n plus 4. Uh, well, if, if you look at this, this is very similar to this. Uh, if you multiply this out, this would be 4n plus 4. And then factor out the 2, so that would be this. Um, that would then be this. So this will cancel out with, with this here. So basically, rewrite this as this. Okay, so, so now this will cancel out this, giving you, giving you, giving you this. So, if you look at this, the next term divided by the current term is, this, this whole thing here is slightly, ever so slightly greater than 1. Because, because look at it, the, the, the numerator will always be bigger than the denominator. So this thing here will always be slightly bigger than, just a slight amount bigger than 1. So when you, when you look at this, the next term divided by the current term will always be slightly bigger, will always be slightly bigger than 1. So what that means is, when you look at the next term divided by the current term, so looking at, looking at this thing here, it, it, will, it will be something like this. The next term, so this is your, this is your an plus 1, an plus 1, that's this complicated thing here, and then this is your current term, uh, an here. Well, the, the ne if, if you look at this, the next term, the next term divided by the current term, the next term divided by the current term is always bigger than 1. That means it must be going up. So by the nth term test, it's got to diverge. It's definitely going to, going to diverge because it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you're just going to add a bigger amount. Well, the nth term says that you have to head towards 0 in order for, for this thing here to converge. But well, here, when you look at this, the next term divided by the current term is it's always going to be slightly bigger than 1. So that means that means it must be climbing. It must be climbing. So that means it must be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So you're adding a bigger amount, a bigger amount, a bigger amount. So the whole summation would just get bigger and bigger. It would just diverge. Well, by the nth term test, it has to head towards 0 in order for it to converge. But here, when you get the next term, remember, we are not looking at the limit. We are not lo looking at the limit. If you look at the limit, this thing here, the limit of this thing here equals 1. But then if you just purely looking at the next term divided by the current term, well, when you get the next term divided by the current term, because it's bigger than 1, you know it's going to be climbing. It's just going to get bigger and bigger. In order for something to converge, it must head it, might, it needs to head towards zero. Here we've got something that keeps on climbing and climbing. Uh, AM plus one will be bigger than AM. It's, well, we can, because of this be, being bigger than, than one, we, uh, we can definitely conclude that this is going to, to diverge. With the ratio test, we can't even conclude that it's going to 
that we can't we can't determine if it's going to uh, converge or diverge with it with the ratio test is um, is inconclusive. But then by looking at this, the next term divided by the current term, because because we've established that it's going to climb because this is being bigger than than one, then then we can definitely we can now definitely conclude that this will definitely diverge. Okay.